Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Sport Federation TV, where every week we take a look at sport in the Western Cape. Nice full show for you this evening. Of course, I suppose the good news is that you don't have to wear a mask anymore. Um, and there is uh, less uh, social distancing. And uh, we can expect our stadiums and venues to be chock-a-block. Right, so we're going to take a look tonight at uh, boxing. We'll talk karate and we'll find out what's happening in the world of baseball. We're going to be joined by Ian Kribbenio a little bit later as the head coach for the South African under 12 side that is going to the World Cup in Taiwan in a few weeks' time. On the show with me now, folks, Troy Fata, head coach of the Western Cape Karate side. Troy, we haven't seen you in studio for a long time. Welcome back. Hi, JP. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be back. It's nice to be more relaxed again. Yeah, so we normally, over the last two years, we've spoken to you online. Um, yeah. Are, are you feeling like we're getting back to things normal? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Um, it's also great really great not to wear a mask um <laughs> so it's uh, yeah we're getting back to that uh, normality which is amazing yeah 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 but uh, i mean tell me a little bit about the last two years how difficult has it been i mean that first those first few months of COVID was sort of uh shut down yeah yeah um <coughs> look when we when we first heard of the the lockdown we thought it was just going to be quick um and then it extended so karate actually for the first couple about eight months just died completely we were just doing online classes. We struggled. Um, and then when we got back into the dojos, it was, it was hard. It was difficult because we were so unsure um, of the distance. We were so, we couldn't touch. We couldn't, there was so much we couldn't yeah. do. So it basically, it went back to basic karate again. So it was interesting when the, when the, when the, when the COVID time came and, you, and the karate guys, and we, when we spoke to you guys, you guys started doing these online competitions online kata, online training, a lot of sports were doing that. Yeah. When you eventually came back to the dojo and you saw your students now for the first time, you've been teaching them online, how, how did it look? Um, yeah, it was weird because after that amount of time with little kids, they, they grew. Yeah. Um, so I saw some kids and I didn't recognize them <laughs> and now then they're wearing masks. So but when we got back to the dojo, it was amazing, but it was also that unsure of you know, can we can we shake hands? Can we get yeah, close? Yeah. You know, it's it was it was strange because it almost felt like we were still behind a bit of a screen. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't normal. It wasn't but when you were when you were teaching online. I mean, you, when you teach online, you, you can't see the you can't see distance. You can't see speed. You yeah. can't necessarily z zoom in on or have physically have a look at someone's hand or yeah. their feet. Um, and I mean, it's difficult to coach online. I'm kind of trying to get the gauge like it looked good on TV, yeah. but then you brought them in, in the dojo. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly that. So I mean, when I would watch myself on TV, I thought, geez, I'm moving quick. And then you just see it's a bit of a lag. So I looked a bit faster online than I was in person. And exactly that, when the kids came into class, often the feet were skew and the hands were pulled back on, on the screen. They looked great. Yeah. And I thought we were really doing well. Um, but what it actually did, it put a lot of people back quite far. Um, especially with the basics, with the cutter, and even the, when they, when before COVID, everyone was competition ready. COVID hit, and then when we came back to the dojo, everyone was struggling, really struggling. Because yeah. it must be quite hard to tell through the online coaching if a student is ready for a competition. Yeah, no, extremely hard because you get no, like you say, I mean, you only see one side of a pullback. You can't see, you can't see everything. You can't see the speed. You can't feel their strength yeah. um, by their breathing. Um, so yeah, for us to see online, it looked good, um, but then a lot of the times it, it wasn't. Were there any positives in that space? I mean, I, I would imagine one of the things that for you guys, uh, I wouldn't say a positive, but one, one of the opportunities would, would be that because of the online space, you got to engage maybe more with people that weren't in the dojo, more with people overseas. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a massive positive. Um, one thing we had to learn to teach differently, which was a great positive. Uh, I actually collaborated with an instructor in Portugal and we had quite a big seminar. Um, I think there was about four countries involved. So we did a seminar with Portugal, which was amazing. Um, and I also had a seminar with the Namibian team, which was also great. So yeah, for that, we, we reached out to people that we never really reached out to and they reached out to us as well. So the exposure was, it was easier. 
it was a lot easier to travel. <laughs> so are there global standards? I mean, if a guy's teaching in Portugal and you're teaching in South Africa, do you both have to teach the same thing? Um, yeah, so the, with, with that, it was, it was sports karate. So the sports karate is sports karate. We, so it was like um, we, we kind of had the same idea for the class and we just worked off each other. Um, it was actually an instructor that I competed against previously, um, a very good fighter in, from Portugal. So we, we communicated what we were going to do and we collaborated like that. So we, we stuck to the same sort of drills and exercises. It's one of the nice things about, I suppose, about karate is that you come together at some stage even if you compete against them. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, we would, uh, we, I fought him twice. We, on the match, you go that you, you give it all and afterwards you hug him. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so every time I see him now, he gives me a big hug and it's, it's great. But then when we put the gear on, it's a, it's a different story. So the dif when, you, when you say sport karate and you talk about what's the difference between normal karate, sport karate, uh, competitive karate, social karate, how, how do you draw these lines? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's quite difficult. So sports karate with us, we go through KSA, Karate South Africa, um, and they're aligned with World Karate Federation, which is the WKF. Uh, so sports karate is the only, the only way us in karate get our uh, national, provincial uh, colors. Um, and then traditional karate is more the, it's more the guys that like to, like to get hit, like to be strong, like to be more physical. Um, and that, that stays pretty much in the dojo. Well, um, that was my question, I suppose. Then, then when, you, when you have your kids come to your dojo in the evening, I know you've got a dojo in Tableview. Yeah. Um, when they arrive there, are they practicing sport karate or are they practicing your style of karate? Yeah, so I have, I have different days for, for sports karate and traditional karate. So uh, I split it up in, in the week. Um, so even on my senior classes, my, on a Tuesday and Thursday evening, the one hour will be traditional karate and the next hour will be sports karate. Right. Um, yeah. Which is, it, it is quite difficult for the kids sometimes because they, they get confused between traditional and sports. Uh, the fighting is different. The cutters are different. Well, not different. It's just uh, it's more yeah, it's more structured, more adapted yeah. uh, to the competition side. Exactly. Of so yeah. you do your so most karate schools then, from what it sounds like, they they do their traditional training and then split off yeah. for the specific segments to do the competition training. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I do I do like the competition side quite a lot. So. I would say I lean a bit more to sports training at my dojo. Um, but yeah, I mean, when kids start, it's for the first year or two, it's purely just traditional karate. Yeah. Um, and then if they show a spark for competition, then, then we go that way. Well, we're quite keen to find out about that. So folks, we're talking to Troy Fate, he's of course uh, co head coach for the Western Cape Karate. Uh, WKF Karate Year um, uh, in the Western Cape. Uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about the competitions that uh, KSA Western Cape have had, Karate Western Cape and WKF and the international competitions. It certainly looks like we're back. Don't go away, we're back after the break. Welcome back, folks. Right, nice to have you back here with Sport Federation TV here on Cape Town TV, DSTV, Channel 263, as you know. Uh, well, if you were with us before the break, you'll know we're talking to Troy Fata, head coach for uh, WKF uh, Western Cape Karate. Um, Troy, so we spoke about the last sort of two years. It's been an interesting, uh, call it survival strategy, I suppose, for everybody. Yeah. But during this time, I mean, you guys then, you you. From a from a karate point of view in South Africa, you ha you managed to get to some competitions. Yeah, so um, we we did quite a lot, even while we were still under the Disaster Act. Um, we competed quite a bit. So KSA Karate South Africa was quite they were quite active with us. Um, obviously, we had to compete with masks. Everything was very strict, and yeah, so we started we started competing quite early. Um, yeah. And that was that was amazing. It was just it was very very difficult with the masks, uh, with the social distance, with no spectators. It was probably one of the hardest for a lot of a lot of competitors. So what were the typical kind of competitions you guys were doing? I mean, you were doing kata, uh, yeah. kumite. So online, it first started with only kata. Yeah. Um, and then when we when KSA started bringing in 
the competitions back, we started having our, our league events. So we would have a national league event. Um, How does a league event work? What is a league event? So a league event, it's almost like a, a Premier League um, where you fight for, fight for points and positions. So there would be about five competitions a year scattered out throughout the country. Um, and in some of the events, only top 10 in the country are allowed to compete. Other events are open to all, all um, athletes, all levels. So do you, do, you, do you, if you're a league competitor, do you compete more than once in a year and then get points and ranks and so on? Is that? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, I mean, we would compete in nationals. Uh, so nationals holds the most points for, for ranking. And then those same people would compete in the, the league events. So you're competing five to six times nationally a year. Yeah, yeah. And so how does that work for, I mean, d once you've got your league rank, are these international rankings or is it local rankings? No, these are national rankings. So national? It's, yeah. Okay. So it's all local. Um, and this is, they use, the selectors use for selection for overseas competitions. Okay, all right. And, and at the end of the year, are you then the, the league <coughs> champion or how does that work? Like, yeah, so I mean, we... Are, are you like the Stormers where you eventually win the league? Um, no, actually not. We, <laughs> you, you, you just keep your ranking, and right. it, would, it would follow into the next year. Um, okay. So actually, it's a very, it's a very good idea to have a, a league winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how does that work for you as a coach? I mean, do you have uh, a, a provincial league team, or do you guys compete as a province? How does that work? So into the the league events we do, we compete as uh, we send a Western Cape team, um, and. A lot of times it's it's just up to who can afford it at that time and make yeah. their way to a certain province to compete. Um, so we don't have a, a strict team. They do, however, have to be a ranked um, athlete or they would have to have competed at a KSA national event before uh, they can go to a league uh, event. And are you able to, considering that you guys come from your, your the, the teams or come from different dojos, or different clubs for the folks maybe that are at home now, um, uh, do, do you then, as a coach, do you have an opportunity to work with these athletes or do the individual coaches? How does that work? So, obviously, the most important is your instructor, your individual coach. Um, and then from there, we do have squad trainings. So yeah. we'll have uh, a week and a day or two where we, we get together with the guys and we have a session. Um, so then our, our group of coaches would get together and, and train with the kids. Um, we actually had a, a training session two weeks ago over the weekend. Um, where we also then would have a, a session for development athletes as well. Okay. You guys are talking about the, the development athletes. You had a fantastic tournament recently at Weinberg, Tumor, yeah. uh, Western Cape against Gauteng. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 uh, was that a first? That, yeah, that was a, I think that was a first for us. Um, Carol Ann Daniels actually took charge of that and she, yeah. she did a great job. Um, so that was a first for us and now, later in the year, those kids will be going to a development nationals, um, which for them, they're, they're ecstatic, they're excited, and they're, they're very keen. So, is it fair to say that the coaches actually are using those type of development tournaments? I mean, we often use this word development, but what does that mean? It's sort of, us, is it right to say that the coach is giving the, the athlete his first chance to, to get a sense of competition? Yeah, so it's you, you basically allowing that kid to touch the water, you know, dip his foot. We had, we've had a kid that, a few kids that competed at the development tournament and um, they quickly actually increased their ranking and now they, w one or two of them actually competed at the Arnold Classic two right. weeks ago. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it, it really, it lights the fire up some of those kids. Um, I know for one of my students, he's really, he's, he's keen, he's, he's very motivated since that competition yeah. as well. So listen, we've, uh, you, you're sitting here in front of us, in front of me at the moment. I see you've got the uh, an injury on your hand there, your finger. Maybe just uh, for the maybe yeah. for the folks there that can see it. So you got a pinky injury yeah. there. Just tell me a little bit about this. What happened? Yeah, so it um, looks a bit sad. It's just my pinky finger. Uh, so we competed at uh, the UFAC Region South in on the 27th to the 29th of May. Yeah. Um, this was held in Durban. And it was the region south is the south, South African countries that came together to compete. Yeah. Um, so we all came together in Durban, and it was a it was a pro tier competition. So you had yeah. to be a pro tier athlete to compete. 
And yeah, that's that's where I did this in. Uh, so you've been punching people. Yeah, badly, <laughs> punching badly. <yeah. laughs> um, it should never happen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've got my pinky caught and got now what they call mallet mallet finger. So how often do you do you do you compete? I mean, how often do you fight? Um, often. This year, I mean, this year has been really hectic already. Uh, I think I've competed three, four times already in different competitions this year. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been quite quite tough and it's it's also difficult to try not peak too soon and not peak in the competition where you should be peaking late in the year so uh yeah this year has been busy i think we've had about five or six competitions already so what is it what's important for you when you're talking about peaking or, or sort of getting that periodization right what what, I, what is how does what works for you guys? Is it a question of you must be cardiovascularly fit or you must have your focus, your timing? What, what is it that makes yeah, it so your box? Um, it also depends where we're competing. Yeah. Um, I know if we're competing in Joburg, our cardio is going to be quite intense, so we need to, our fitness needs to get up. Um, so for me, going into a competition, I want to, my timing needs to be right. For me, the most important is my timing and my reaction. Yeah. Um, I can, I can manage being a bit unfit um, with with experience, uh, but I like to not peak too soon in the year, because later in the year we do have a bigger competition coming up. Yeah. So I, I make sure I'm ready, ready enough for that competition, um, not to push too hard and peak too soon, and then my body's under strain. When's your next? Uh, when's your next competition? So the next one I'm working towards. We have. Um, Cape Town, Cape Town League event. Uh, so there will be a national event in Cape Town yeah. late in the year. But the big one is in December. So that's UFAC. That's uh, and where it's pretty much the African Games. Where, where are they doing that one? Luckily, we've got that in Durban. Okay. So Any international competitions coming up? No, especially with the... Yeah, so this, we've actually sent a team over on Tuesday to Croatia yeah. where they have a training camp and then there's a youth cup. So we've got quite a big team that's gone over there. That that's quite a big international, um, and that's from cadets at age 14 up to under 21, so 20 years old. And then later in the year, we've got our junior cadet and under 21 world championships held in Turkey. So this year is a busy year. It's busy then, year, yeah, yeah. For the seniors, it's uh, our UFAC event, which is the All African Games for for karate. Which is and for one. you, from a, from a, from a day point of view, uh, yeah, do you now go back to the dojo? <coughs> Today it's Friday, so not today. I'll, I'll have a bit of a rest. So I'll Back to table view. The dojo is yeah. in table view. Table view. Gorju Kai. Uh, not Gorju Kai. Uh, TFKA. TFKA. We are, we are Gorju, a Gorju dojo. Yeah. Um, so yeah, today I like to rest a bit on the Friday. Um, I'll train a bit, but not too much. Is that Troy Fata Karate Association? Yeah, Troy Fata Karate. Did I get it right? Academy. The first time? Academy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. So um, I do like to have a bit of a rest there, yeah. uh, especially getting a bit older. The body takes a bit of a beating, so I need to, I need to rest. Um, but yeah, I, every other day is is training and pushing. And yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. Troy, it's been fantastic having you in the studio. Yeah. Uh, I know we haven't, it's been all online, now we got you back, and yeah, great stuff with the world of karate, good luck for all the competitions, well done, it's all the great work you guys do with the kids, and we're looking forward to having you guys back. Yeah, thanks JP, thanks so much, it's great to, it's great to be here with our mask. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we actually yeah. now recognize you. Yeah. <laughs> right folks, uh, Troy Fighter, Western Cape Karate Coach, uh, international comp competitor, dojos of course in uh, table view, look out there for TFKA. Troy Fata Karate Academy. Go and join. Go find out how to get your kids involved and uh, come through the ranks. We're certainly seeing a lot of champions coming from Western Cape. We'll take a break. When we come back, we're carrying on talking sport in the province. Don't go away. Back in a sec.